I'm pretty excited today. I finally got hold of a butt kicker. If you don't know what one of these is, you're about to find out after this superfluous second intro that gives me the opportunity to change the camera angle without a jarring jump cut. Right, so what's a butt kicker? Well, it's a brand name, and that brand name is applied to a range of audio transducers that provide a vibration effect while watching films, playing games, or listening to music. On the box, it's advertised as a silent subwoofer. However, I wouldn't replace a subwoofer with this. I'd use this in addition to a subwoofer because this really doesn't give out any sound. It just gives out vibrations. You may have seen a video that I made not too long ago when I upgraded my home cinema system to a Dolby Atmos setup. At that time I replaced the front left and right stereo and the center channel and added in two Atmos upfirers. Those are all assisted by the existing subwoofer I had which is a Cambridge Audio Minx X301. It's a compact little subwoofer however it does provide room filling sound. It's a 300 watt output and I have the volume set at about the halfway point. Now, if we look at the specs for my subwoofer, the second thing down on the left-hand side there, frequency response, we can see that at the top end it's 200 hertz, but at the bottom it's 31 hertz. So it can reproduce sounds between 31 and 200 hertz. So remember that bottom number, 31 hertz. Let's look at the butt kicker advance and see how low that can go. And the frequency response on there, second thing down there, five up to 200 so it covers the same sort of upper range but it also goes down as low as five and remember the other one was 31 so this takes it below the subwoofer in effect it's a sub subwoofer now i should mention that even though the transducer can go down as low as five hertz the power amplifier that's supplied in this kit i've got only goes down as low as 10 at the bottom now i say only it's very low it's a lot lower uh, sound than i could reproduce through my subwoofer and i say sound it's more like a vibration when it gets to that but you get the idea and no criticism at all about this subwoofer absolutely love it it's just i'm now able with this kit to produce sounds that that can't manage now it's possible that you've experienced a butt kicker in action if you've been to any of these auditoriums that are listed on the screen they've installed them onto the seats there i think i've been to that one at kennedy space center if i remember rightly that's the one where a space shuttle takes off at the beginning and the whole place seems to vibrate and of course they can create that effect by vibrating your chair rather than blasting the entire audience with a very loud sound now I should point out that this is not the same as the D-Box system. That's a completely different setup where it's a motion chair in a cinema more often than not which will move around to a pre-programmed routine which goes along with the film. It's not just reacting to vibrations as actual programmed movements that someone's put at certain points in the movie. You can, if you wanted to, get a home decoder for D-Box and there are Blu-rays available that will have the D-Box code embedded in them. So if you get the appropriate chair you could recreate that experience at home however that's quite a lot more elaborate and of course it doesn't work with every film by comparison the home cinema butt kicker kit that i've got is an easy install all i have to do is put it under the rear leg of my settee and it will provide enough vibration so that it can be felt through an entire three-person couch now, if the idea of vibrating furniture sounds a little bit silly, and of course it does, just consider that it's been 20 years now since we've had vibrating games controllers. I'm sure when they first came out, people thought the idea was a bit odd, but now no self-respecting console manufacturer would release a new games machine without some sort of force feedback games controller. Now the kit that I've got has everything in that I need to get started and it also acts wirelessly. Most of these kits do require a wire going from your amplifier through to the couch which is a bit awkward in my room. Now I've been unable to obtain one of these normally. I've looked and they've been for sale for perhaps five years or so now these ones but no one would send them to the UK. But the one I've got I got from a chap on eBay second hand. Hopefully everything is inside this kit because it is supposed to contain quite a few things but yeah the chap was in the US and he sent it to me in the UK so that's the only way I've been able to obtain one of these I really do hope it works on multi-voltage as well because I don't want to use this one through a step down transformer if at all possible so anyway I'm going to open up all these boxes and we'll see exactly what we've got in here and at the end of it we'll see whether or not the thing actually works the chap who'd owned this had done a very good job of putting everything back inside the box the only thing that seemed to be missing was the quick start guide which I could download off the internet Anyway, here's the transducer itself. It's a heavy piece of metal. Inside there is a one pound weight 
which is being suspended by magnets. Now that goes on this base and that is what goes under the leg of the couch. The rest of the legs of the couch are raised up with these spacers, these rubber spacers, and you put a screw through those and screw them into the bottom legs of your couch. You've also got to attach the transducer to this base. Now, originally, if you bought this, this base would have been separate, the transducer would have been separate, the amplifiers would have been separate. This kit puts everything together, which makes it a lot easier. So we'll just put that out of the way for the moment, have a look at the amplifier that came inside the box. So this is a device that powers the transducer. We've got an infrared port on the left there. We've got power intensity up and down. Around the back, we've got various connections. On the left-hand side there, we've got speaker terminals. Those are what go to the transducer. Infrared in and out means you can daisy chain these and run them all off one infrared remote. And then on the right-hand side there, you can see I've got the power indicator. And I'm happy to see that this is a selectable multi-voltage device. So it's currently set for the US. It's just a matter of sliding that switch down and making it the UK voltage so now I don't need to use a step down transformer so I'm happy about that. Now the power lead that's supplied of course is a US one but I've swapped it out for a UK one those are easy enough to get hold of so that's done. So the next job is to decide which way I'm going to send the sound off to this transducer. I could either split the existing subwoofer output from my AV receiver with this cable or I could use the other cable and send a second subwoofer output if I've got one or daisy chain my existing subwoofer. The kit that I've got can be used in two different configurations, either wired or wireless. Now, if I was choosing to do it wired, I'd be running one of the outputs from my AV receiver or daisy chaining one out of the subwoofer, putting it into the input on the power amplifier. All that equipment would then remain at the front of the room, but the output from the power amplifier would be sent over this cable around the outside of the room, and it would attach up to the transducer, which would be located beneath one of the legs of the couch. However, I don't want to run that cable around the outside of my room. So instead, I'm using the wireless option. So the wireless option, you take that output from your subwoofer or from your AV receiver and put it into one of the inputs on this. Doesn't matter which one, it's all mono inside. Then this little puck type device transmits the signal over RF which goes across the room and gets picked up by the receiver, which is this little device which plugs into the USB port on the back of the power amplifier. So this means I can now have the power amp hidden away behind the couch, along with all the cables for the transducer. It's a much neater system and it works just as well. The only downside to using a wireless setup is that it takes up an additional power supply. This little thing outputs five volts, it's universal, and this is what powers a transmission device. I think I'm probably gonna swap this out with a USB to barrel plug cable that means I'll be able to power it from one of my other pieces of equipment but in the meantime I'm just going to plug it into a US to UK plug adapter and power it through that. The only other things that were inside the box that I haven't shown you are this plastic stand which enables you to put the amplifier on its side which means you can put it behind a couch and not take up too much floor space I'll definitely be using that and then finally we've got the remote control which enables you to turn the amplifier on and off adjust the intensity and we've got three different EQs at the bottom there as well which you can see towards the bottom of your screen there what those do to the sound or vibration I suppose. So using the remote control, we can see the light goes from red to green, which means it's on. I would have preferred some more indicator lights on there, though, perhaps to show what EQ mode you're in and definitely to show what the intensity level had been set at, but can't do anything about that now. So let's put a demo disc in and have a go with this. I'm using a demo disc because rather than getting a film and having to fast forward through to the parts where things are happening, this tends to give your speakers a good workout. I'm happy to report that everything is working perfectly, so now let me demonstrate to you what the transducer does during a particularly intense clip from Jurassic World. Okay, so I've got it all set up. It didn't take long at all. Despite my initial concerns regarding the amount of things coming out of these boxes, it wasn't hard to put it together. Probably took me about an hour all in, and that includes putting the transducer under the rear leg of the couch and raising the other legs up appropriately with the supplied spacers. 
Now I've also got the amplifier for the transducer behind me with the infrared receiver pointing that way so I can then just reach over my shoulder and turn the thing on or off. The thing that I had to mess around with a little bit was adjusting some of the outputs on my amplifier, the crossover point between the uh, sub and the rest of the audio. I'd got it set a little bit high so I was getting the transducer activated in parts where it was just music and things, it was just a bass note. So I've adjusted that down a little bit so now it's really only kicking in when it's an effect that should uh, result in some sort of vibration type feeling. So where the sub would get really low and you'd feel a little bit of something in your chest, well that's the point when the uh, transducer then vibrates the couch a little bit. Now I've had to turn it right down on the intensity because I had it sort of set a bit higher up and it was uh, just came across as a bit of a novelty, something that was a bit kind of ridiculous. Like, oh the couch is vibrating, it takes you right out of the film. You just want it to feel like it's part of the movie, almost like you've got really gigantic speakers in the room so that when there's a proper thump something explodes you actually feel it but also you're not sort of thinking oh the couch is going you know that kind of thing anyway what I have to do now is play a couple of films a couple of movies just watch something with a bit of action in it a few explosions and things just to see how I like it because I don't want to pass a judgment immediately so I'll come back to you in a moment but it'll probably be a couple of days after I've shot this bit and I've had a time to watch a couple of films <laughs> Okay, so it's a couple of days later now and I've managed to watch a few films. So what do I think about the butt kicker? I think it is excellent. It's so much better than I was expecting even. Some of these things I'll test out and then I'll just put them away in storage after. This one is definitely staying installed. It makes the film so much more entertaining. Now I'm sure people are going to say that this is just a gimmick and yes, it is a gimmick. It's something that you don't necessarily need to be able to watch a film. After all, if you wanted to, you could just watch a film on a mobile phone. However, home cinema is all about taking things up a notch. So you get a nice big screen, you get a surround sound system and now to that I've added in a butt kicker. The whole thing's about a suspension of disbelief. Those people are actors, those things aren't really happening. The sound isn't really coming from behind me, it's just coming from speakers. And again the vibration is just adding to that sort of in immersion experience in the whole film. You don't want it taking you out of the film and that's where the subtlety comes in because I could just turn the subwoofer all the way up and I'm going to get all booming sound all the way through the film, which is not what you want. So you get your crossover at the right point, you get your volume set to a sensible level on the subwoofer, therefore the subwoofer only sort of kicks in where it needs to, and then the butt kicker kicks in a little bit below that or towards the bottom end of it. So what happens is you get a massive explosion on screen or something that goes boom or thump or whatever. And if the director decided that they wanted that to be something that you feel as well as hear, they'll kick the sound into the really low frequencies and that's where this thing will get activated. So you're not just watching the whole film and everyone's talking and your couch is bouncing around. No, you've got that set quite low as well. So really it only kicks in when there's something that specifically should be a thing that makes you feel it and that's what it's there for and it works perfectly it really adds to the experience your couch isn't bouncing up and down i haven't got it set too high it just gives you that kind of vibration through your body the kind of feeling that something uh, serious and significant is happening now despite all that i'm going to say that it's going to be hard to get hold of one of these if you look on the website now, you'll find that there aren't any for sale, or I think hardly any. All of them say out of stock when I've clicked on them, although I think there are a couple of devices there that are in stock. I don't know what's going on with the company. They've been like this for a good couple of years, I think, when I've looked on their website, everything's been out of stock. So I'm a little bit concerned for their well-being. There are other companies that sell these transducer devices and you get the amplifiers for them and you wire them up. I don't know if anyone's offering the wireless kit, which is the thing that attracted me to this. I didn't want to be trying to run a wire under the carpet. I couldn't really, all around the edge of the room. And that wire is quite thick as well for these. Uh, so after all, I'm happy that I've got this back here. I've got the wireless transmitting from the front. It's completely invisible to anyone in the room. Nobody knows it's here unless I switch it on. And then you definitely know it's here at the appropriate moments in the film. So yeah, I think this is a great idea. It's a shame it never really took off, but if you are into home cinema, it's definitely something that you should try out if at all possible, although I know that's a bit of a, a difficult thing to do, but that's the end of this video for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.
Oh, I don't like the colour of that settee. I'd best let them know. Are you shopping for furniture? No, I'm commenting on a video. Is it a video about furniture then? No, I don't know what it's about. I usually watch with the sound turned off. Back in my day, I used to watch my favourite show, Star Trek, on a wooden box in the corner of the room called a television. Cool story, bro. But when the programme finished, I never thought about writing in to Gene Roddenberry to complain about the colour of the furniture. You'd have been better off writing to Matt Jeffries. He was the set designer. No, what I meant is that I couldn't. We only had a black and white TV. Oh, so is that it? That's the punchline? Aye, that's all I've got. Perhaps if we just sit here quietly, we can think of something a little bit better. Good idea. No, I've got nothing. My mind's completely blank. Oh, I almost had one then, but now it's gone. If I sneak out while you're in shot, then you'll have to come up with something on your own. No, don't do that. 